Hi there, my name is Jessica Berg. I'm a licensed mental health counselor with Seattle Christian Counseling. Um, I'm making a short video today to just talk about a topic that I find is really important for our culture, um, for women and teen girls specifically. That's the population that I typically see in my practice. Um, half of my clients are teens and half of them are adults. And right now on my caseload, I have a lot of girls coming in for eating disorder issues. Um, it's where my heart is. I worked in an eating disorder clinic for a year, years ago when I was also in private practice um, on my own. And so I did private practice part-time and I also worked in an eating disorder clinic part-time. And so I worked with this population for about a year. What I have seen there and what I've seen now still currently in private practice is a lot of people coming in struggling with eating challenges, yes, and that's you know part of what eating disorders are, but the real, I think, crux underneath all of that is body image, um, comparing to others in society, and also this need to control something when everything around us feels out of control. Um, I recently also saw a few days ago, um, just through the news and the internet, that Pink, uh, the singer, who I actually love her music, um, her birthday is also the same birthday as my daughter. So she has a daughter that's close to my daughter's age for some reason. Um, I heard about this speech that she did at the Video Music Awards and it just spoke to me. I wanted to read a little bit of it for this video just to serve the purpose of saying why this is such an important issue, the fact that Pink is speaking out about it, the fact that I deal with this on a daily basis in my practice with teen girls coming in, with adult women also, but even my now almost five-year-old daughter notices things like body image and makeup and hair and clothes. And um, I mean, little girls do, of course, but I can see where this can get to be an issue as girls get older, comparing themselves to others, feeling like they have to live up to like societal expectations and what people think they should look like. So here I wanted to read a little bit, um, if you guys have not heard about it yet, just what her speech was. Um, and it was actually geared at her six-year-old daughter who was in the audience with her husband at the VMA Awards. Um, she said, I know I don't have a lot of time. I want to tell you a quick story. story. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it. Phase paraphrase this quickly. Recently, I was driving my daughter's school. She said to me, mom, and I said, yes. She said, I'm the ugliest girl I know. And I said, huh? And she said, yeah, I look like a boy with long hair. And my brain went to, oh my gosh, you're six. Why? Where's this coming from? Who said this? Can I kick somebody's beep um, or what? And which is exactly where my mind would go. Like, who's saying this to my daughter? Who do I need to go talk to? Right? She said, Pink said, but I didn't say anything. Instead, I went home and made a PowerPoint presentation for her. And in that presentation were androgynous rock stars and artists that live their truth, that are probably made fun of every day of their life and carry on, wave their flag, and inspire the rest of us. These are artists like Michael Jackson, David Bowie, and Freddie Mercury, Annie Lennox, Prince, Janis Joplin, George Michael, Elton John, and so many artists. Her eyes glazed over, but then I said, you know, I really want to know why you feel this way about yourself. And her daughter said, well, I look like a boy. And I said, well, what do you think I look like? And her daughter said, well, you're beautiful. And then Pink said, well, thanks. But when people make fun of me, that's what they use. They used to say I looked like a boy or I'm too masculine or I have too many opinions or my body is too strong. And I said to her, do you see me growing my hair? And her daughter said, no, mama. And I said, do you see me changing my body? No, mama. Do you see me changing the way I present myself to the world? No, mama. Do you see me selling out arenas all over the world? Yes, mama. Okay, so baby girl, we don't change. We take the gravel and the shell and we make a pearl. And we help other people to change so they can see more kinds of beauty. And then she said how inspired she was by all the artists out of there for being their true selves, lighting the way. Um, at the end, she said, my darling girl, you're beautiful and I love you. Um, for some reason, I think, again, her daughter's six, my daughter's almost five, this really touched me in a lot of ways. Um, like I said, because I have a daughter myself. When I was in college, I also struggled with anorexia for a long time, um, in college and out of college, just to give a little bit personal information about myself. So I think that's another reason why eating disorders are so dear and near to my heart. Um, I understand them on a personal level. I also understand them on an educational, professional level. I've helped many women and teens um, go into recovery in this area. It's highly addictive. Um, it is characterized like in the addiction spectrum, just like an alcoholic or a drug addict, eating disorder behaviors are very addictive. Um, the point of the speech and why I wanted to share it 
and just all the things I'm telling you guys today is that all of this goes together, right? I mean, all of it is relevant in this world today. The fact that social media has just taken over kids' lives, um, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, I'm probably not even aware of half the stuff out there. I know um, I have teens coming a lot telling me they check this stuff. Some of them have to stop checking it because they're comparing themselves a lot or they're feeling compared by other people on there. And so here I am now raising my own daughter. I've been through my own struggles with eating issues in my past. And then I hear this speech from Pink and I think, man, you know, like as women and as professionals and as mothers, we need to be sane and helping these kids that we're raising that what you look like should not be determined by your culture, by society, by what other people think about you. Your body is your own body. Um, your feelings are your own feelings, your opinions. Um, being a strong, independent, um, educated woman is a good thing. Um, if you want to wear makeup and do your hair a certain way and wear certain clothes, as long as it's not harmful to you, there should be nothing wrong with that, right? Um, there also shouldn't be this pressure, however, if you aren't someone that likes to do those things, to have to do that, to own up to what other people think you should look like or be like. And that's what I got from the speech that Pink was saying to her daughter. Like, just because other people might think you look like a boy with long hair, or they make that comment to you, does not mean, therefore, that's who you are, or that's what you look like. Um, you determine that. You determine your strength. You determine your image. You determine how you feel inside about yourself. Nobody else should do that for you. Um, if I were to say anything to women out there watching this, teens, girls, whoever, whatever age you are, your life and your body and your image and your opinions are, are all about you. They should not be determined by anybody around you, whether it's on social media, your family, your friends, your boyfriends, your spouses, whoever, right? Um, it's so important to get this ingrained in our kids when we're raising them and realize that what we're doing is also a huge example to them. I, For instance, my daughter will say to me sometimes, mom, why do you wear makeup? You don't need it. You look beautiful without it. And I always say, thanks, sweetie. I really appreciate that. You know what? Mommy doesn't need it. You're right. Mommy just likes to wear it. Um, for me, I know when I go to work and when I'm in a professional environment, I like to look my best, right? I think most of us do. And there is something to be said about that. I mean, our image is important on one side of the spectrum. On the other, it can become very obsessive and culture oriented and society oriented. And it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be the case. We shouldn't feel like we have to look like everybody else in order to fit in. I guess that's kind of some of the point too of what Pink was trying to say and what I'm trying to also reiterate and agree with Ron is that whoever you are inside, however you're raised, whatever you are born to look like is who you are and you should be proud of that. You should never have to live up to what somebody else thinks of you um, or compare yourself to others all the time. And I know with eating disorder specifically, that's one of the biggest drivers in this issue is that there's this comparison to look like someone you're not, right? And to be something you're not and to just continually strive for that. And the problem is no one ever gets there because even if you're at your lowest weight, you think you look your best, right, in the mirror, you can look back on pictures years later when you're in a healthy place and still feel like, wow, I actually looked great, but back then I didn't feel like I did. And so there's just this standard, I think, that people try to live up to that you're never, ever going to meet. And even those people that feel like they have, honestly will tell you in that moment, they don't feel like they have. So this is why eating disorders can be so scary. And, you know, there's also mortality rate, which is very serious with this. Um, people that don't get help and don't recover can die from this because there's a standard that you can never live up to. You can never meet these expectations that this eating disorder can pull you and suck you into. Um, I also want to give encouragement and hope to let you know that there is help for this. Like that's why counseling, group support, nutritionists, doctors, you know, it's really important to work as a team to help people in recovery. I do have a couple clients where we do have a team around them. It's me. They have a nutritionist, they have a doctor and we don't always talk um, all the time because nobody has the time for that. But I talk with my clients. I know what they're getting from these other professionals. We're exchanging information if we need to. And there's this sense of collaboration, like that we're all working together as a team for this client. Um, to kind of wrap all this up, because I know I've been talking for a while and I didn't mean to go on and on. Um, but I just wanted to let anyone out there watching this know that your life is important, um, how you feel is important, and what you look like is determined by you. It should not be determined by society 
um, again, by your friends or people around you. Like this should be determined by what you feel like inside. And really deep down, God made you the way that you are, faults and all. Even when you feel like on your worst days, you don't look great, you don't feel great. God made you this way. So start to look at the things that you love about yourself, celebrate those. And if you need help, get into counseling, get into a group, get into some kind of recovery support group to get help for this. There is help. It can get better. And people do recover from eating disorders. Um, as well as along with that, the body image issue and the comparisons in this culture that we have that I feel like is so prevalent right now, especially like I said earlier with all the social media pressure for young kids. Um, there is this expectation to like live up to something that no one can live up to. Um, so I just want to stress how important it is to talk to your parents, talk to your family members if you're an adult, get help that you need, get the support, know that it's out there, know you're not alone, and also know that this is a struggle most women have. I don't care you know, who you are or what age you are, at some point in your life, most women have struggled with this at some point. Maybe not a whole eating disorder per se, but body image issues, feeling compared, feeling not good enough, feeling like they have to meet standards that nobody can live up to because it's just not realistic. Um, and it's stuff that's made up. So know that God loves you. Know you're made the way you are for a reason. And again, know that there's help. I just want to encourage you all to listen to, if you haven't seen this speech from Pink, maybe watch it online. See how powerful it is for what she says to her daughter. I know like if it were me, I would have done something very similar if my daughter had been in the audience and I had, had an experience like that. I mean, it was so powerful to watch her give this to the world, but also to her daughter in front of the world. Like, hey, you are beautiful the way you are. Don't ever let anyone determine that for you but yourself. Um, so important to raise strong women in this society um, where comparisons do happen quite a bit. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. I hope that everyone's having a wonderful week. I hope you have a blessed day. And thank you for watching and listening to me and indulging in all of my information. I hope that it all comes together for you. And if anything, you get one little piece of this that really sticks with you. Um, and that is that you should celebrate who you are. You're beautiful inside and out. No one determines that but you. Okay, take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye.